So you know this saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it? Well, that exactly describes the vehicle that I'm driving here today. My name is Omar, and this is the 2022 Lexus GX. So Toyota and Lexus have a few vehicles in their stable that they refuse to update. On Toyota's side, that includes the 4Runner and the Land Cruiser, a new version of which is on the way, but we won't be getting it here in the US. On the Lexus side, it includes the GX right here and the LX, which is based on the Land Cruiser, and a new version of that is coming to the United States. And if I'm new to you, consider hitting that like button and that subscribe button. I drop two to three car reviews every week, so you might enjoy my stuff. So why is it that Toyota refuses to change these SUVs? The answer is reliability. You see, all these gadgets and gizmos and bells and whistles are really cool, but the reliability of these additions to modern vehicles hasn't been established. Which is why you see expensive Lexus SUVs without things like wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, and sometimes you don't even get a touchscreen display. I'm looking at you, Lexus LX. So let's talk GX. How does this thing drive? This thing is butter, butter smooth. No matter what anyone says, this is one of the most comfortable luxury SUVs out there. To be honest, this is way more comfortable than any Benz, BMW, or Audi SUV. It handles bumps and imperfections on the road with so much ease, it sees a bump on the road and just laughs at it. Lexus in general has one of the best ride qualities of any luxury brand, and the GX is one of the smoothest in a stable. It does feel large to drive and to park. This thing is pretty heavy overall, tipping the scale at over 5,100 pounds. But yeah, I can't stress how comfortable this thing is. To help you pull that 5,100 pounds, you still have a 4.6 liter V8 under the hood that makes 301 horsepower and 329 pound-feet of torque. It's not made it to an eight-speed automatic transmission because the GX doesn't care about fuel economy. You still have a six-speed automatic transmission because that setup is reliable. Again, the Lexus GX is one of the most reliable SUVs of all time. It ranks as one of the best reliable mid-size luxury SUVs. Now, I did some digging around the internet, and according to RepairPal.com, the Lexus GX will cost you a total of $770 in annual repair costs. In comparison, you will spend well over $1,000 a year if you go for one of the German rivals. Also, a properly maintained GX can drive well past the 200,000 mile mark. Imagine that. Imagine driving that much in a vehicle that you own. Well, the GX is one of them. Now that's all cool and all, but that means the GX doesn't see many upgrades or modern tech because that would hurt reliability. And it looks virtually the same on the outside and inside for around 10 years. In fact, it hasn't changed enough for me to give you a complete and thorough tour of it. What has changed? Let me show you. Well, for the 2022 model year, the Lexus GX gets an updated center console. You finally have a 10.3 inch touchscreen display with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but of course you don't get wireless Apple CarPlay or wireless Android Auto. And for 2022, Lexus has finally decided not to charge you extra for navigation, so that is now standard. And that's really it. Other than that, the center console has been slightly redesigned with the climate controls that sit below the touchscreen display. The offboarding controls have been moved away from here next to the gear shift. They now sit below the climate controls. And I'm not sure that's a good placement because I've turned the downhill assist control every single time I wanted to adjust the volume, like every single time. And that may be because the media controls now sit below the off-roading controls right here. And hey, look at that. You still have a CD player. I think this may be the last Lexus that still has a CD player. I can just imagine a younger generation buying one of these and mistaking this for a credit card holder. Now, let me show you some other areas where the Lexus GX is really starting to show its age besides the CD player. You don't have a three turn signal option to change lanes. You can't just push it down halfway and have the indicator blink three times to change lanes. You got to do it the old fashioned way and push it all the way down. So check this out. Lexus now gives you power folding mirrors as standard. Thank you. But there is no option to fold them automatically once you hit lock from the outside. You have to be inside, fold them first, and then get out and hit lock. That's really annoying. The control for the front heated and cooled seats is just a dial, not a button. The rear heated seats have two settings, high and low, and each has its own button. You don't get a wireless charger on a vehicle that starts above $55,000. You also don't get any USB-C ports, just USB-A ports all over this thing. But here are some things that the Lexus GX does have that are kind of cool and unique. You can watch the headlamps on your GX just by pushing this button, just in case they get dirty while you're off-roading. I love that. It's still got a CD player. I actually think that's kind of cool and unique. The tire pressure monitoring system not only tells you how much air you have in the tires that you're riding on, but also how much air you have in your spare tire. Nice to know that. 
Now let's talk about the exterior design a little bit because nothing has changed at all. The Lexus GX has looked the same since 2009 besides the addition of the spindle grille that has gotten bigger and bigger over the years. And that's it. And for 2022, Lexus has a special edition called the Blackline Special Edition, which is available in that really cool nori green pearl color. And you can get it with 18 inch black wheels. That's how I would get it if I were to buy a GX. Step inside and again, it's the same. Everything is essentially where it was since 2009. Besides the center console, that's the only thing that has changed. That said, let me show you the second and the third row legroom as well as the cargo capacity. Hop in the second row of the GX and you're working with 34.1 inches of legroom. I'm about six foot tall. That is my seating position. As you can see, still a good amount of room back here. Not that bad. Now, if you go for the premium trims and above, you get heated rear seats with the high and low setting. Not one button, two buttons. And if you're somebody that needs second row captain chairs, you will have to go for the luxury trim like my test model here. To get into the third row, you just pull this latch right over here and the second row seat will slide forward and kind of tilt forward, making way for you to get into the third row. All right, let's hop in the third row. This is my first attempt. So let's see how it goes. Once you get back here, you have, oh my God, 29.3 inches of legroom. Let's move this back. Oh, you got a first aid kit right here. It's tight. It's tight for somebody my size, probably somebody not my size either to get out of the third row. You just do that. Actually scratch that. This latch actually folds the second row down. If you need more cargo capacity to get out of the third row, you pull this latch down here, kind of like halfway, and then just slide that seat so you can get out. By the way, you do have power reclining third row seats if you have the luxury trim. That's pretty cool. Now, if you want to fold the third row seats without walking around the back, you can do that if you have the luxury trim from right here, these buttons right here. So just hold them down and come on. There we go. Good job, GX. Almost copped out on me there. And you can also put them back up from right here. Takes a second, but you know, if you have the luxury trim, you live the luxury lifestyle. Kind of cool the way they come out. Now, as for the cargo area, if you need quick access to it, you can just push this button right here, pop open the glass and load and unload your items pretty quickly. Because otherwise to access the cargo area, you have to open the cargo door, which opens sideways just like this. And once you get it opened, you have a total of 11.6 cubic feet behind the third row. And with the third row folded, you have 46.7 cubic feet. And with both rows folded, you have 64.7 cubic feet. So you have plenty of space. Oh, and by the way, if you have the power reclining seats with the luxury trim, you can also fold and unfold a third row by using the buttons right here in the cargo area. So let's just do that really quick. Here they come, here they come, and they take a while. Now, before I give you my final thoughts on whether or not if you should buy the Lexus GX, let me point out a few random things that I love to show all of you. You have a total of five cup holders. That's weird, I know, but let me show you what I mean. You have two in the front for the front passengers, and then in the second row, you have two right here in the middle of the captain chairs, they flip out. And then in the third row, you have a cup holder on the right side. It's a full on cup holder, right? But on the left side, it's like a little tray. If you put a drink there, it's gonna fall down. So I don't know what that's about. Here are what the keys look like to the Lexus GX. Obviously it doesn't have remote start on the keys. Not many Lexus models do. I think you can remote start some of them through the Inform app, but I doubt that you can remote start the GX with the Inform app, but they're pretty nice keys. Door open and close sound from the outside. And from the inside, pretty solid indeed. Charging game wise, you obviously don't have a wireless charger, but you do have two USB-A ports in the front for the front passengers. Rear passengers are also working with two USB-A ports right there. Third row passengers, nope, nothing back here when it comes to charging besides this household outlet, which they can plug into and pull the cable next to them. That's really about it. It is now time to hear the indicator and horn sound test here on the 2022 Lexus GX indicator first. Just like the Lexus indicator that I expected. Now for the horn sound, better have some authority. And it does. Nice. So what do I recommend? Should you buy the Lexus GX? Well, with the starting price tag of $55,425, this is still pretty expensive. 
and you can throw on a bunch of options and packages like my test model here and walk away with a price tag that's north of $70,000. Now, I would never pay $70,000 for this thing. That ain't gonna happen. If you're going to buy this, I recommend at least going for the premium trim, which starts right under $57,000. And if you're somebody that loves modern tech and all these cool, fancy features, then definitely don't buy this. But if you're someone that doesn't care for all the bells and whistles, go and test drive it. Because maybe, just maybe, you're somebody that will drive this north of 200,000 miles and will love every second of it. Either way, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. My handle is at Omar Drives. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Face. I guess the lesson here is that reliability can eventually get boring and outdated but it can be very comfortable. This is so smooth. Oh look, bump. <laughs> nope, didn't feel it.